Claudine, we were hoping, or we were hoping to um, hear back from the NGO CSW what your ideas were, what you did, what you saw, what the point of the event was, um, and how you experienced it. So, uh, what did you think, Claudine? Oh, fantastic. And thank you so much for offering me this opportunity to actually speak about my experience. I mean, this was the first time I'd actually attended the NGO CSW. W, which is the Commission Committee on um, the Status of Women as Rights. It's, it was an important, I would say, and an interesting um, opportunity, as well as actually seeing how the UN works around the NGOs. I remember one person um, when I was studying tell, telling me that actually, so the NGOs actually have sort of like a separate area where they meet and the rest of actually the UN um, kind of carries on with their business. So now I actually have a clearer understanding that actually that is the case. You know, you don't actually get in there and, and be able to actually influence the changes, but you're more like on the sides, sidelines, you're actually given opportunities in that way. So for me, my experience has been quite enlightening. You know, I, I was heartened to actually hear that actually over 25,000 women actually had registered. Um, the important thing is actually recognizing that, you know, the NGOs have been there for a long time that have been engaged with this. This was the 65th event, which was um, um, an important one, because as we know now, there are issues around women's rights that actually needs to be discussed. So. From my um, events that I attended, there were loads of them that I managed to attend. I missed the consultation there, unfortunately, but the most important ones, I, I tried to actually have an attendance on those. And I, I recognized that there were separation on areas around the world. So you had like, um, the Latin American um, and the Caribbean consultation day, you had the African day and um, so forth. So there was meant to actually be an exhibit wall for actually all those areas that actually are covered. But the stagnant thing that I actually recognized was that, you know, there wasn't actually much representation from countries that are actually more isolated, you know, like for Africa, you had very few NGOs that actually were involved in this. So the places where you're having more of the gender-based violence there's less uh, um, um, what you would call engagement from those countries where women are actually saying these are the problems, this is how they need to actually be resolved. And there seem to actually have been no information on how women, uh, generally women, actually can actually influence policies and actually ensure that, you know, the Istanbul Convention goes ahead. If there's any changes, actually, they are actually fully represented. So that seems to me quite issues that I thought, you know, this is important to actually have women understanding how these um, sessions work as well as the UN work. Um, so I attended <clears throat> one, of most, one of the most interesting ones, obviously being um, a woman of color. So I attended a few women of color uh, events. I actually don't like the name women of color, but the black woman. So, um, and this was actually by the, um, NACCP, which was actually uh, Black Women Anti-Black Racism, Climate Change in the US. Although it was in the US, I actually felt like, well, maybe I need to actually understand what, you know, what this is all about and how it's actually impacting women, obviously in the US, but actually there were lots of other people that were there. So what I would find in these um, events that it didn't actually seem to matter where you were in the world. So if you were interested in, 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 in an event, which was mostly the parallel events, you would actually go in and, and actually attend those. But the most problematic thing that I found was that actually most of the ones that actually are UN-based were consultations, that it was virtually impossible for people to be able to actually attend as normal members who would actually join in. So that for me was something that I felt actually it shouldn't have been the case. Um, there should be an opportunity for people to be, uh, women in particular, to be fully consulted and actually having had an online event offered an opportunity where the UN could have actually engaged better with women that they actually had like their, their say. So I would like to see an opportunity. I mean, I hope that actually um, the WHRC would be able to actually push for such a, such a consultation of women because the decisions that are made in these environments are actually being made by people that don't seem to actually have 
you know, grassroots um, uh, connections with women at all. So I would urge all women that are active, even if you're not active, even if you're here by chance, it's an opportunity for you to actually be aware of the deficit that are available in these platforms that are making decisions around women's rights and that are impacting women across the world. So CEDAW is actually quite important. Uh, the Istanbul Convention is important. And we've also just learned that Turkey has literally um, decided to stop actually being part of the Istanbul Con Convention. We really protect women. In this country, in Turkey, there are three women met up every day. I mean, I don't even want to talk about other issues around gender violence for women. That is absolutely upsetting. I mean, I can actually sit there and think, what is happening? Why are we going backwards on the rights of women instead of actually moving forward to support women? So I really, really, really urge all people, um, in particular, you know, as we say, if there are men here, allies <laughs> so go out find out about these things so that then you can support women in your life make people aware of the rights of women that are actually being taken away by all sorts of manner of things that are actually are occurring at the moment so we need to really just fast forward and actually think how things are being made so the thing that was also significant for me i saw quite a lot of universities actually quite involved in in the ngo space so this is a space that seems to actually have like kind of the select few people that actually putting themselves forward and saying to be representing women, which I actually generally, I mean, on, on my personal thing and probably people that know me, I have a need, I have a huge issue with NGOs because they don't always represent people that they say they represent. And they have kind of a disproportionate um, voice in actually espousing what actually they think is right or wrong. And as we know, there's a lot of, you know, policy capture in NGOs, in particular the large NGOs, where actually the rights of women are being put backwards and, and they are not on the forefront um, of, of, of decisions. And it's actually good to really see the changes. The only changes that are gonna happen, in my view, is when women are actually taking into consideration what is happening and taking the fight towards these bodies that are actually meant to be saying they represent women. And actually, in a sense, if you look at it, they do not represent women at all. We as Women's Human Rights Campaign are worried about the threat of gender identity ideology um, mm -hmm. taking away some women's rights or you know, being a threat. Do, do, do you think the CSW was tackling this issue? Were they, are they concerned about it? Or do you think most of the attendees, I mean, there were 25,000 there. What sort of feeling did you get from the other attendees and from the workshops? From my personal view, from what I actually saw, from most of the events that I attended, that didn't seem to be any concept that actually was seen as a problem, which is actually quite worrying. Because, you know, if you go around all over the world, there seems to be a move to actually remove, you know, language, change language to actually fit, you know, a, a, a narrative to change, um, you know, the identification of a woman, which is actually quite interesting. But all these were not seemingly the basis of discussion. Most of the things that were being discussed were around gender issues. And obviously the most parallel events were, 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 were hosted and, and sponsored by the NGOs themselves. So you can see where this is going. My view is that actually we need to specifically really attend to the crucial, I, I would say the crucial uh, position of women and womanhood that's actually seemed to be under attack by, you know, what do you call it, gender ideology, um, from, from all sides, really. So we really have to be protecting women's rights in a way. But my urging women to get involved. I mean, there's been um, an agreed um, an agreed wedding <laughs> of the 65th uh, event. So please go and look at that. So find out if there's anything that's actually worrying on there. But best of all, I'm in the UK. I would like to see our government doing something really radical to make sure that actually the CEDAW is actually enacted, Istanbul Convention is actually sort of enacted in protecting women with the recent events of Sarah, Sarah and everybody's aware of that. You know, 
women are being technically written out of history um, <laughs> by all sorts, but we need to actually really be fighting for that. So I urge all women to actually really be aware. Uh, these are the things that are worrying and um, we need to be active. You know, you, we can't all sit back and say, well, there's nothing that's happening. We have to be actively involved in actually deciding what the bodies that are meant to be protecting us. I mean, it's been 65 years. I mean, it tells you <laughs> 65 years since, you know, but there hasn't been much, much changes. So it really is actually quite worrying. And there's been a huge gender-based violence, the changes in, in Europe, in certain countries in Europe, other than techie, um, there, there is a move to really just not actually consider the issues around women's rights as well as actually protecting them. And, you know, we hope that people would actually be thinking along those lines and seeing how uh, they can, you know, make a difference. Inform yourself. It's no longer an excuse to not be informed. You need to look and find out the information and make sure that you are active in your community and, and hold all the politicians, all the people to account for actually protecting women, because it's not enough to say, oh, we, we are dealing with women's rights. Um, it's not enough because the women's rights are under attack. So we have to actually take a, a stance and say no. Just my last thoughts. I mean, there's loads of um, um, events I attended and I didn't want to actually concentrate on that because that would actually take away from, you know, the idea that actually this is meant to be a woman's um, opportunity to raise the issues that they experience. But my experience of it has been kind of the opposite where uh, self-selected groups have actually chosen to actually present things at, at the UN. So I think actually the most important thing that the, the, the WHRC can do is really mobilize um, grassroots women to actually really be aware of what's happening in these bodies that are actually meant to represent their views and push for changes across, you know, multinationally, so across all nations. So it's such an important platform that can really ensure that, you know, protection of women's rights is at the heart of the people that are main, mainly tasked has to actually look after the, the protection of women. So I would actually really urge women to really take that as a message from me to really become active around issues that impact women. And remember, we have achieved things in the West, but in countries that are still under suppression of, of patriarchy, it's, it's worse. You know, we've moved from a position where it's really worse and our NGOs, um, uh, the funding that's actually being given to NGOs is facilitating the destruction on women's rights. And I think that's one thing that I just want to put forward as a crying call for women. There's a saying in my language, my other language, <laughs> is watinta abafazi watintin bogod, meaning when you touch women, you are really touching the stone. The, stone that actually holds everything together so we really have to get on and really protect uh, women across the world not just really in areas that we are actually interested in so that is my crying call for women to take up arms and really fight it's time to fight it's not time to be nice